not today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sweater Knitting Show. I'm your co-host, Johnny Vasquez. And I'm Lacey Lene. And this is the show that we talk just about sweaters. That's right. Only sweater knitting <laughs> here. Yesterday, there was a couple mentions of some other types of knitting. The knitting that shall not be named. Yes. Um, so we have corrected that problem, and that will not happen again today. So we apologize to all of you who were Expecting. offended by the, those mentions. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about uh, little kind of things that you can add to your sweater. To, to make it uniquely yours. Right, so, so some simple and easy ways to modify your sweaters so that it's more personal. You know, it's... it's um, the details that go into like adding um, just like some character or, or things that you like in a sweater that maybe don't exist in your pattern or you're designing a pattern. So we're just going to throw out some ideas for you to think about including in your next sweater. And we also have a special guest, uh, Delusional Knitter, uh, is going to be hanging out with us today, Angela. Uh, we did a quick little interview with her and to catch up on her progress for her sweater. We're going to be talking about our sweater progress. And of course we'll be checking in with your sweater progress and be seeing all of the photos that you've been posting over the interwebs using the hashtag 30 days sweater. So um, let's do a quick update. You know, we when we set out to start the 30 day sweater challenge this month in October, uh, our goal was to get 5,000 people to sign up. So let's see how many we've had sign up so far. Our grand total right now is 4,000. 780 people. That's pretty stinking good, I would say. So we are 220 people away from reaching our goal of 5,000 people signing up for the challenge. It's not too late to join the challenge. You know, it's never too late, really. I mean, the I mean, challenge yeah. ultimately could be a personal challenge, whether you're doing it in October or not. Just the, to finish your sweater. Right. Absolutely. So continue to tell your friends. Let them know about the... 30 day sweater challenge that's going on right now and uh, we will obviously be continuing to give you updates throughout as well. All right, so Lacey, let's talk about progress. Progress. How's yours coming? I did okay yesterday. Did you, you know, get a lot done during the hangout? So we had our live hangout, kind of our virtual knit night last night, and everybody was really shocked because they would like log in and there's three guys sitting here. Right, because I wasn't here last night, so right. it's just the boys. So just the guys are sitting <laughs> here, and like a couple people, they're like, I dropped my knitting. Like, I had no, I was not expecting to see three grown men sitting here knitting, doing a, a show. And it was a lot of fun. I think you should have a show like that. Yeah. Yeah. We talked a little bit about it. Like, we had a really good time. We, we called ourselves the Yarn Bros. Nice. And so we were like, we should have a show. <laughs> we should have, like... This should be all the time. We, we should either have, like, our own, like, podcast-type show, or we should, like, pitch TLC on, you know, a show. A knitting show. Yeah, a knitting show and, like... Just follow our real life. Right. It, I mean, it would work better if we had, like, a yarn store, you know, that was all owned by men because there's right. maybe, like, one of those Is there really? in the country. What? I don't know. I'm just guessing that there's got to be at least one. Stephen B. That's true. Stephen B. does own a yarn store. So, he owns three yarn stores, actually. So there you go. Maybe you should team up with Stephen B. and have But a Stephen B., I mean, we love Stephen B. He's cool. a very, very cool guy. Um, but... He's also very flamboyant, yes. I should say, which is a little bit different type of... Of guy that you were... Right. Because you, you guys were doing, like, the full-on manly knitting, like, very masculine. Yes. Like, crazy knitting. Right, and 
it was a lot of fun. So the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I, when I get in social situations where I'm supposed to be knitting, I get very little knitting done. You like to watch what everyone else is knitting or talk to see everyone else. Right, stuff. and so I was working on my sweater, and I actually did get, like, another inch knit on it, uh, but it was not quite as much as I was hoping to get on it. And then I just realized this morning, I did finally get to the point where I took my sleeves out. So my sleeves are off of my main needle, and they're gigantic. Like, my arms are huge. Um, they're still proportional, like it's fine. I'm not worried about it not fitting correctly because I tried it on this morning. And, um, but I found out that I messed up my cables. So I have to go back. I have to unknit two rows to go back and fix my cable. So you have to put your sleeves back on? No, actually, it's right after I move my sleeves well, off. That's Good, at least. At least I think it is. I <laughs> hope it is. That would be really annoying. <laughs> well, I made quite a bit of progress on mine. Well, what did tell people what you had to do yesterday? Well, yesterday I had to go get my hair done. And the place I go to get my hair done is in Santa Monica, which is actually not that far away from here in miles. It's like 25 miles. Which is fine if you're not driving through Los Angeles. Because if you drive through Los Angeles, it's about two hours with traffic. Um, so I hate sitting in traffic. So I just take the bus because it also takes two hours. So I had two hours on the bus driving there. And then I had basically four hours getting my hair done. And then two and a half hours coming back on the bus. So I had kind of like seven and a half hours of knitting yesterday. Yes, it's very soft. It's It looks a lot like it did yesterday, but there are no roots, and it's softer. They use a different brand of color. It's great. But I got a really great amount done on my sweater. So um, this is my progress. I finished the body of the sweater this morning. I bound it off, and then these down here, like this, I don't know if you can see it. They're pleats, and I haven't blocked them flat yet, but they will end up being like a little three pleat detail at the bottom on the left side, um, just kind of over my leg there. So that's kind of a fun detail. So now all I have to do is finish the bottom edge because I'm doing like a turned under hem. So we're it kind of looks like you just stopped knitting and it makes a really nice edge, but it doesn't look like your bind off. It is like just nicely rolled under. So I have to sew that and then do the edging on the sleeves and the neckline and then I'm making a detachable cowl collar. So I'll do that probably in the next day or two. We're going to be hanging out at Yarnosphere over the weekend, so I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to knit. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm really yay. excited for Yarnosphere. Um, we have to go set up our booth tomorrow right after we do the show here. And we've never done a, a, an event like this before. So we'll have a 30-day sweater booth at Yarnosphere. Yes. And we're going to have all of the pattern samples on display from the pattern collection that's coming out soon. Actually, it should be available starting this weekend. Yeah. Um, and... I'm I'm both like incredibly excited and absolutely terrified. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> so our our overarching brand, Yarn Nation, which is sort of like the the brand that all of our different shows and stuff fall under, is the sponsor of the entire event. Um, so it's just it's really bizarre, you know, to like be having our logo everywhere and stuff and being at that point in, in what we're doing. But, but we'll see. We'll see. I think uh, the response is going to be great. And uh, if you guys are in the Southern California area, you should definitely come out to Yarnosphere. Uh, it's at the um, Costa Mesa, no, the Orange, Orange County. County Fairgrounds Yes. in Costa Mesa. And I have... Um some good information that says the Yarn Bros will all be there. 
Yes, that we will all be there. If you wanted to stop by, by for a little dose of manly knitting entertainment. Or you wanted to see me, because that's cool, too. <laughs> okay, so do we want to talk about details first, or should we check in with Angela? Let's check in with Angela first. All right, so we're going to uh, check in with Angela. Um, I think her name is pronounced Elves. Alves, like Alves. elves, but with an A instead of an E. L, or it could be Alves. No, I asked her. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, she has a podcast called Delusional Knitter, and uh, she is participating in the 30-Day Sweater Challenge yeah. herself. So we wanted to take a minute to catch up with her and see how her progress is going and such. So. Uh, let's make sure that we're all queued up here. I'm going to go grab my double-pointed needles. I'll be right back. Sure. And here we go. Hi, everybody. I have a great guest with us today. This is Angela Alves, uh, who's sometimes also known as Delusional Knitter, which we're going to find a little bit about <laughs> where that came from. Um, but she is one of our... Uh, Promotional tour partners uh, who has been helping, uh, you know, spread the word about the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, and we wanted to check in with her to see how. I'm not getting audio. I don't have audio either. Okay, so let's try this again. We're gonna see if we can get the audio to work here. Hi, everybody. I have a great guest with us today. This is Angela Alves, uh, who's sometimes oh. also known as Delusional Knitter, which we're going to find a little bit. Hi, everybody. I have a great guest with us today. This is Angela Alves, uh, who's sometimes also known as Delusional Knitter, which we're going to find a little bit about <laughs> where that came from. Um, but she is one of our... Uh, Promotional tour partners uh, who has been helping, uh, you know, spread the word about the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, and we wanted to check in with her to see how her 30 Day Sweater is going, and maybe talk a little bit about her podcast that she does as well. So, Angela, thank you so much for joining us today. How how are things going where you're at? Very good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Great. Um, um, and you you podcast, so I do. can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your podcast? Sure. So it's just kind of like a video blogging podcast. I show what I've been knitting. Mm -hmm. I show, you know, anything I've learned about knitting, maybe do a book review or something like that. Um, I've done some tutorial episodes on specific things, maybe something I was actually working on. And I just watched podcasts for a long time. And then one day I was like, hey, I can do this. So I went out and I got a little camera and I started recording and people started giving me feedback and watching. So I've been doing it for almost two years now. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it yep. seems like there was sort of another like wave of podcasters and, yeah. and such. Because we got started doing New Stitch a Day at, you know, like the beginning of 2011. And I've seen a lot of similar shows um, and other podcasts that happened around that same time. So. Yeah, it was just a huge thing. I used to listen to audio podcasts before there were video ones. Okay. But now the video is so much better. You know, you can show people what you're doing. You can, you know, do all kinds of other things that you can't do with the audio. Yeah, well, and especially for a medium that's so visual, like knitting, mm -hmm. you kind of have right. to see, you know, what you're doing. So. Yeah. Now, how did you get into knitting? It's a funny story, actually. I have always been crafty. I've always done crafty things. Like, I remodeled this whole room when we moved here, and if you haven't noticed, it's my yarn cave, because I figured <laughs> when we bought a house, I was going to have a yarn cave. And so it's been about seven years that I've been knitting, and initially, my mother-in-law was a knitter, and they live up in the White Mountains, so when we would go visit, we would stay for a weekend or something like that. My mom always worked on the weekend. She couldn't come with us. And she was like, oh, I'd really love to learn how to knit. And one day, my mother-in-law was knitting while we were up there, and I was like, hey, show me how to do that, and I'll show my mom. She gave me this crazy look, like, are you nuts? Like, how am I going to show you when you're going to show somebody else in, like, five minutes? <laughs> and But she was more than happy to show me. She was like, I'll show you. And she got some scrap yarn, got some needles, cast on a little swatch, 
And within a minute, I was doing a basket weave stitch. And she thought I was a genius. And I was like, well, it's not that hard. And she's like, but we're already doing it. And it just took off from there. And I just, I went back home. I went to my local yarn store. I took classes. I sat with the ladies on Saturdays. I joined the Knitters Guild. And now I've taught at the Knitters Guild. You know, I've designed patterns now. And, and the podcast. And it just took over my life. And it's an obsession now. So... It's a sickness that people get, it you is. know, like you just get infected and it's all over. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Um, I my... I'm sorry, I missed that. I said it just latches on and doesn't let go. Right? <laughs> like a parasite. It's the, yeah. it's the <laughs> my husband would think so, right? The fiber it's parasite. Over the house. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So what about knitting just does it for you That that is just – that you connect with so much that you it's taken over your life? I think it's that there's just so many things you can do, and it's just amazing that with two little pointy sticks and some string, you can make blankets, socks, hats, scarves, sweaters, jackets, mittens, you know, anything. You can make anything with just a couple of stitches, increases, decreases, and nowadays, too, yarn... There's just so many fabulous colors and fibers and all kinds of different, you know, it's not just acrylic yarn anymore. It's, it's all kinds of different things. And I love, too, that yarn is not like other crafts where if you make a boo-boo, you have to throw it away. You know, it's like paper or something. You just undo it and do it again. So, yeah, it's very... And it's very soothing. You know, you can watch TV. You can have a conversation. You can do other things while you're doing it, too. Yeah, you know, I never thought about that, about the being able to undo it. Hmm. And just, I mean, I, I've i always enjoyed making things, but, you know, definitely something about knitting, like, is just there's so much to explore there. And the finished thing that you have when you're done is so much more useful than a lot of other crafts, you know? Right. It's like, you yeah. know, you make, like, some paper craft, then you, you know, send out a card, and then they throw it away after they read it, you know? Right, yeah, there's only, I actually do paper craft, and there's only about ten people that get a card, because I know the rest of the people are like, eh, and they toss it, you know, it took me 20 minutes to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I always tell people, don't ever get any cards. Like, <laughs> don't waste your money, you know, or your time. <laughs> <laughs> So you are actually participating in the 30 Day Sweater Challenge. I am. What what got you excited about being involved? Um, I was actually contacted and because of my podcast, and I was very excited. I've knit a few sweaters before, but I really liked how this was your own sweater. Mm -hmm. You take your measurements, you make it for you, you pick what you want it to be, and that really excited me because you can follow a pattern, but this is more... Yours. You're making it. It's yours. And uh, what did you decide to do for your sweater? You're using the 30-day sweater framework to design your yep. sweater. So what yep. was your inspiration behind the design you decided to go with? I actually have a store-bought sweater that everybody asked me if I knit it myself, and I didn't. And it is so threadbare and falling apart <laughs> that I want to make one that I can have. This It's just a big, bulky turtleneck. <laughs> But if you, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but if you can see, okay, yeah. Just, yeah, there's just bits falling apart everywhere. And so this sweater is going to be this sweater. It's going to be my big, bulky turtleneck that I can make and wear and it won't fall apart. I don't even know where I got that thing. I think it was like a hand-me-down from a family cousin or something, like <laughs> okay. 10 years ago. And I wear it to death. And, yeah, after I knit and everything, people would always at work ask me, like, oh, did you knit your sweater? I was like, no. <laughs> you don't ask when I do wear the one that I knit, but you ask this one, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So how is your progress coming along? Where where are you at in your sweater? Very good. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be today. I might be a little bit further. Um, so I have finished the raglan, and I am working on the body. Okay. So I probably have like two, two and a half inches of the body done. Beautiful. Yeah, and I'm really liking this yarn in the skein. It just looks kind of black. Uh, and it's striping really nice. Yeah, I was noticing that. It's It's got a kind of a cool self-striping effect. Yeah. 
Now, how are you finding the 30 Day Sweater framework to work through? I love it. I love that it's broken up into sections and bits. Um, I did have a problem that I think some other people had because I actually found the answer on the forums. Uh -huh. That, and this is also why I'm a delusional knitter. As I was doing this, it did not look right. I kept knitting. I was like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I would have had a neck the size of a car tire by the time I was done if I kept going like this. Oh, no. And you know, it was all my fault because I didn't read the instructions properly. And the increase I picked told me to do something. And then the next line told me why. And I completely ignored it and did my own thing. And so the increases were off, and the front was getting more increases than the back. Oh, okay. So I was increasing after the markers and not before the markers. So I ripped it all out and started again, and now it's fine. Now, now it looks like it will fit a human being. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of the interesting things about the framework. I think a lot of people, especially people who have a little bit more experience knitting, they're like, oh, well, it should work like this, and that's not really the way the framework is designed. You know, you kind of have to trust right. that the pattern's going to turn out the way that it should right. based off the instructions that are there. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of the people that we've had who have had issues are people who have made sweaters before in a different fashion or, you know, right. have, have more experience and are like, oh, well, I've done this before, so this is how I should do it now. Yeah. And we're like, no, just trust the pattern. Like, it will, yeah. it will work out on its own. But you got to read the instructions and you got to follow them the way that they they are. Well, I'm glad that you were able to figure out uh, yeah. what happened. There was actually the diagram. There's a pictograph diagram in there mm -hmm. of the markers. And once I looked at that closely and then looked at my mess and looked at it again, I was like, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. So that was actually very helpful in showing me what it was and exactly how the, and how the sweater was being built out. And that's how I was able to correct it and move on. All right, great. Well, uh, I'm really excited to see how the rest of your sweater turns out. Um, and you are talking about this through on your blog during the, the challenge this month? Yep, on my podcast and on my – I have a regular blog, too, that I post podcast episodes on. So I've actually been taking pictures of the progress on that one and putting them on that and then showing it on the actual video podcast as well. Great. So if people want to find out more about your knitting and follow along with you during your sweater challenge, where should they go online? Um, my blog is delusionalknitter.blogspot.com, and then you can link through to the video podcast from there. All right, great. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, I think we'll, we'll have to do some kind of quick follow-up at the end of the challenge to see how everything turned out. Uh, oh, yeah. But we really appreciate all of your help and your support, and I can't, see, can't wait to see how it turns out. Thank you. Thank you. Are we needed? There we go. And we're back. Cool. Well, thanks again to Angela for uh, uh, checking in with us and for um, sharing her sweater design with us. We're really excited to see how that ends up I love looking. that she's making a sweater that she already had but is, like, destroyed now, so she's just making her own. Like, I think that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's... Um, the yarn that she's using ended up turning out really interestingly. I don't know if you saw, but she's doing kind of, like, stripes... The yarn yeah. self striping, and so she was like, "Oh, that's kind of a happy little accident." I don't think she knew beforehand. The thing that I'm interested to see is how the sleeves will end up striping because it'll be at a different oh like, right interval. Speed. Yeah. So there will probably be big fat stripes on her sleeves, which I think could actually look really cool. So I'm interested to see how it turns out. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, details that you can add to your sweater to kind of personalize it or give it a little different look and a feel because using something like the 30-day sweater framework uh, to design a sweater it's basically like a template right and a, or a buffet and you can sort of pick and choose what different options you want to apply to this template and because there are so many options you can come up with an infinite number of different sweaters but beyond like the you know adding a collar a different kind of collar or playing with color work 
or even the length of the sweater or your sleeves or making a cardigan. What are some other things that people can do to the sweater that itself throughout to kind of, you know, embellish it or give it a little bit a, well, of a different look? I think, like, one of the easiest ways you can change things up is how you finish the edges. So how you're finishing your cuffs of your sleeves, how you're finishing the bottom of your sweater. Like, the traditional edging is ribbing. So it's one by one rib or two by two rib, which is great. It's, it's fine. Um, but there are so many, like, interesting edges that you can add. And specifically, like, lacy type edges, if you're interested in that kind of thing, like, that was really big in kind of the more like vintage knitting. So if you wanted to add kind of a, a more vintage flair to your thing, like there are tons and tons and tons of lace edgings that you can put on or herringbone edgings or cabled edgings or whatever. There's whole books on just edging. So you might not necessarily like think of that right off the bat where you'd be like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to add, you know, a pico edging to this darling little girl's sweater. Like, or maybe you just want to have a turned under hem, like that's what I'm doing, so it just it doesn't pull in at the bottom, which some people really dislike about ribbing. Uh huh. So you can just like flip it under, and it just makes a really nice finished looking edge. So you have a, like a, a looser thing going on. Yeah, I mean, if people don't understand what it is that that Lacey's talking about with the turned under hem, it's you probably have seen it in another jacket or garment or something. I can go grab you... one. I have one right here. Okay, sure. I'll be right back. Uh, with a sweater. So beyond hemming, um, oh, and there's some great resources as far as um, edgings and stuff. Uh, Nikki Epstein did a whole series of books about knitting on the edge or knitting over the edge. Um, and it's all different edgings that you can apply or knit into your garments. So this is um, what I'm kind of talking about. So it kind of looks like the knitting just ends, so I'll put this close up. Let's see. So here we go. So this is the outside. It looks like it kind of just stops, but you don't see that bound off edge that you'd normally have. So then on the inside, it actually looks like a nice little hem. So this is kind of a cool way to switch things up. This is actually kind of a hoodie type sweater. Um, so it, it's just... It's really similar to the way that, like, your jeans would be hemmed on the bottom yeah. or, like, a t-shirt would be sewn up along the, the bottom edge. Uh, but it is, like, a good way, like, you can also do it with knitting, and I don't think many people think of that as, like, an option. So... Right. So I say hemmed is a really great way how you're finishing your edges of your sleeves and the bottom of your sweater. Um, is a really great way to personalize, but also, um, how you're finishing, like, if you have a cardigan, like... There are just an infinite amount of ways you can finish the front of your cardigan that are maybe not as normal, like that you can just personalize it with buttons or with zippers or um, however you want to do it. Toggles. Toggles are a great option, especially for guys. Like, And a toggle is kind of like it's a button, but it's like a loop with sort of a little like bar. Right, yeah. Um, Usually they're on like a leather or stuff right. like that. So it's kind of a nice different touch you can add. But buttons themselves are a simple way that you can change up the look of your garment like entirely just by using a completely different style of button or right. color or you size. You could use like a dainty little gold button or you could use like a bright orange plastic button like a giant bright vibrant thing. Which apparently I have a thing for because I talked about orange buttons yesterday. Sorry. But <laughs> I saw it on this sweater one time and it looked fantastic. Or um, you could add pockets. There are tons of different kinds, different shapes of pockets, patch pockets, set-in pockets. I think in the 30-day sweater today we're actually, either today or yesterday, we talked about set-in pockets. In the course. Yeah, so... That's always a great option for personalizing your style or, you know, it's your sweater. You can experiment with it. Like, I added pleats to mine because I didn't know it was even possible, but I was like, I think that I know how to do this, mm -hmm. and so I just tried it, and I figured 
worst comes to worst, it doesn't work, and I have to pull out four inches and do it again. Right. <laughs> but it did work. So um, it's your sweater. Like, you should, you know, experiment with it. See what you like on other sweaters and maybe try doing it yourself. Like, there's resources all over the Internet about, you know, details and finishing. There's plenty of books and stuff also if you're not not into the online thing. But I think pretty much... I just encourage you to try new things because if you don't ever try something new, then you don't ever know if you can do it. So try new things. You'll learn on your way either how not to do something or <laughs> that it actually works. So that's my bit. And none of these things that you're talking about are particularly complicated. Like, yeah. you know, the, other than maybe how you've constructed your pleats for your sweater, like, that's probably not something that the average person just knows how to do. Well, but, yeah. Um, I mean, still, when you explain it, it's not that difficult. Right. And we're not going to go into exactly how she did that right now, but, um, you know, there are more complicated things that you can play with, and the more that you add, you know, to your, your sweater pattern, um, you know, different combinations of, necklines and colors and um, that's another thing we didn't talk about colors you can personalize with color like stripes are a really really easy way to personalize with color or color blocking fair isle that's another really great way yeah I mean you could just knit fair isle sweaters for the end the rest of your life and, and every single one would be really different yeah you would yeah. never knit the same sweater twice um like I'm doing with mine, I'm not doing color, I'm playing with texture. Right. You know, in my fabric. Although I thought about doing really subtle color, like stripes. So like, this is basically black, but it's not black. It's it has a little bit of gray. It's like a charcoal. It's like a charcoal gray. And I thought about doing black with the tar charcoal gray as stripes, but I thought it would just be too much with the cables. I think the with the cables it's too much, but I think if you were doing something more, like, simple as far as texture, like, that would be a really great way right. to add interest without being like, oh, hey, stripes. Right. It's just like, oh, if I look closely, there are stripes there. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of something that I want to play with in the future with striping is... You know, you can be big and bold with your stripes, or you can be a little bit more subdued and subtle. You can play with the widths of the stripes. You can, you, you know... You can play with the... I mean, if you really want to get interesting, you can play with how big your yarn is. Like, you could do stripes of, like... Oh, okay, yeah. Like, if you were knitting normally with a worsted weight and you switched down to a fingering weight for a stripe, you would have, like, a lighter... Like, it, the gauge would be... Like, it would make the fabric a little bit more, like, see-through. Right. If you are just, stay with the same needle size, like... Right. I I mean, that's interesting. That is really interesting. You know, I we, should do that. I'm going to do that. We saw a sweater yesterday. We went to the mall to go buy, like, outfits for the Yarnosphere. And um, the girl who was at the checkout... It's just impossible for me to describe without showing. Like, but basically, the sweater had these sections of reverse stock in it, and like the sweater pattern had like kind of like a wavy section like this, right? In stock in it. I know people who are listening to this rather than watching are going like, "What the heck is he describing?" <laughs> but so this is in like a thicker yarn, like a, a rayon or a bamboo of some sort or... Something shiny. Yeah. But then there was a black nylon thread that was knit within the panels mm -hmm. of the reverse stockinette. And then at some point, they started knitting a separate pattern over the reverse stockinette in the black yarn, just by what? itself. And I'll have to show you a picture of it. That's, um, did you take a picture of it? I did. I asked her if I could take a picture of her sleeve, because <laughs> I was like, that's so interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, but I want to kind of like figure out how it was done and play with it more in the future, because it's so... 
So um, we are those creepy people who check out people's sweaters when they're out and about. <laughs> and occasionally, we stop them and say, hey, wow, that's a really awesome sweater. Can I, can I take a picture of that? And they're like, I do it to people's hats okay. all the time. Like, I'll see people in Starbucks, and they have, like, a cool hat. And I'll be like, can I take a picture of your hat? And they'll just be looking at me like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I was like, I swear, I'm not creepy. I'm not trying to just get a picture of your your face, like, <laughs> to add to my creeper wall. Yeah, that is a little creepy. <laughs> weird. Um, I'm like, no, really, I'm a knitwear designer. I, I promise you. Like, <laughs> like uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, it was just an interesting concept, you know, to have one yarn doing one pattern and the other yarn doing another pattern. Like, that's insane. Yeah, it but was so cool. I would hardly so cool. think that that falls into, like, a simple... No, no, that's not do. simple at all. I was just thinking that that was a very cool concept. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, stripes... I mean, Fair Isle in and of itself is not that difficult, but depending on how complicated your pattern is, you know, and I know some people are just, like, throwing their needles at the screen right now, going, like, what do you mean it's not difficult? I wanted to poke my eyes out when I tried doing it. Uh, yes, well. It's not that difficult. Um, there are difficult Fair Isle patterns. Yes. Um, but Fair Isle, in and of itself, is just knitting with two colors in the same row. Yes. And alternating between the colors. So, there you have it. Those are some things to think about when it comes to personalizing your sweater. Now, if you guys have your own tips or stories about things that you've done to personalize your sweater patterns or uh, tricks that you've used in the past, go ahead and email those to us at questions at 30daysweater.com and uh, we can maybe share some of them tomorrow, you know, and we'll talk about uh, people's responses to... What you did. Yeah, absolutely. So, before we check in with Bobbert uh, about all of your uh, progress that you guys have been making on your 30-day sweater challenge sweaters, uh, we want to let you know that the Sweater Knitting Show is sponsored by 30daysweater.com, if you didn't get that from anything that we talked about earlier. Uh, and the 30-Day Sweater is a framework that teaches you how to design and knit your own custom, fit, top-down, seamless raglan sweater. That is such a mouthful. It is, but I've said it so many times, it's just just rolls off of the <laughs> tongue. Um, so this is a great way for you to experiment test out your design sort of ideas and play with different things, you know, practice some of those techniques that we've talked about as far as um, adding details to your sweaters. Uh, we make it incredibly simple through our ebook, uh, which is just a beautifully designed, uh, you know, uh, digital book. Uh, and it's kind of a workbook. It's got uh, worksheets that you can do your math. Um, it's got all kinds of different options within the book, and then we lay out your design and show you how to knit it in 30 steps. So you can, if you do one step a day, finish in 30 days. Finish just one or in 30 days. Right. If you wanted to do five steps a day, I mean, it's really all go at your own pace, but it is broken down so it is easy for you to like get to the next step. So right. you're not like, wow, I just have to knit a whole sweater. That's really intimidating. Yeah, it it's, makes it very simple to follow along and just do what you have to do for that day. It's particularly designed for people who are very busy. You know, they've got a family, a couple kids, maybe a part-time job if they're, you know, a, a, or a full-time job. Or a full -time job. Um, you know, the goal was to make it very easy to follow. Now, we took this even further with the 30-Day Sweater online course, which allows you to track your progress as you go, um, we do video tutorials, there's downloadable worksheets, and the biggest thing, I think, is the forum. There's a forum there where you can ask questions. A lot of people have already been dealing with some of the, you know, questions that people have, so there's, you know, there's already the answer there for you. Um, we are in there answering questions, so you get direct access to us, um, and it's just a great community uh, people who are, you know, sharing their progress and uh, coming up with interesting ideas. And what we love to see is people who are trying to do things that sort of push the framework to its limit. 
and help people figure out how to incorporate those designs. So um, it's just really cool things going on. Like, and there's places to post pictures, so we can see what everyone's doing, which I think is the best part. Absolutely. So if you want to get the 30 Day Sweater book or the 30 Day Sweater course, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash book or slash course. And there is a coupon code in our free sweater planning guide. We've actually put together a 30-page document that walks you through all the questions you need to answer before you knit your next sweater. And it's good for all kinds of sweaters, not just not just, not just the 30-day sweater, yeah. raglan-style sweater. Um, you can get that by going to 30daysweater.com slash guide. Just enter your email. It'll take you to a page to download the book. If you, if you did that and you forgot to download it or you didn't get it, email us. We'll send you a copy as well. And you can use the coupon code in there to get 25% off of either the book or the course. And the course comes with the book, so you don't have to buy them separately. Right, yeah, the the course is a pretty sweet deal. I'm just going to say that. Absolutely. So uh, we would love for you guys to check out those resources. And uh, we're going to check in now with Bobbert on the progress you all have been making in the last 24 hours. So, Bobbert, how are things going? They are going great. Um, I am actually making progress on mine. I'm really excited. This will one day actually be something. Um, <laughs> so a um, little bit jealous of Josh's here, but um, we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, anyways, um, let's go ahead and get started having a look at what people have been working on. So here we are. Um, so this one was posted on Ravelry. It's a little sweater that um, somebody, uh, Knit Fun for Me is knitting for um, a doll. So, um, which, that's right, this is a pattern that you can, um, a course that you could actually use to design things for um, dolls, children, um, all sorts of people. So, um, Are dolls people? In a way, in a way. Um, American Girl, come on. Um, uh, Karen, this is uh, hers. We've been following her, her, her work and her progress. Um, again, like she's got some great color choices, great color work going. Um, really like to see like how this is all coming out. I mean, I love the grays, the blue, and that purple. Um, so looking good. Um, keep it up. So. Um, here's another one for Ravelry. Um, Young Knitter 91 posted. This was her, I believe this was the progress um, while watching our show last night. So, um, which is really cool. I like the, the little um, um, crosses that are in this um, and, and the whole like trim on that. Looking cool. Really, really good pattern. I, I, um, I'm tempted to try some myself. And click. Now this one was on Facebook. Um, this is Darby Bab. So um, she had put together this sweater in using the course in what three days? I think she finished in four days. This is my mom, everyone. This is four days. A sweater for my my nephew here. And my mom was texting me last night, and I told her that she had to post it on Facebook so that everyone could see it. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Uh, I believe she said the only thing she has left is to put in the zipper and some blocking. Um, but pretty much done um, in four days. So, cool. Yeah, um, and that's, um, it's good to know that you don't have to stick to the 30-day sweater schedule. Like, if you want to knit faster, it's all just broken down into different steps. So you can go at your own pace. And if you're making a sweater like this that's a much smaller sweater, yeah, it's definitely possible to get done in, you know, just a couple days' time. And she knits about an hour a night. So, I mean, you can make little sweaters very quickly. Yeah. So, um, on to Instagram. A lot of posts on Instagram this time around. Um, Actually, most of our posts have been on Instagram and Ravelry, so I recommend checking those out. We are at 
Um, 30 day sweater on Instagram and on Ravelry uh, we have a group called 30 day sweater challenge um, so uh, somebody just starting off on theirs um, got their cast on good job keep going <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much how mine looked like two days ago so Here's somebody else took a picture of theirs while uh, they've, it's kind of hard to see, but they've got the actual uh, book open on on their uh, their computer there to to follow along with. But looking good, um, keep up the work. So another post, uh, somebody watching the morning show while uh, while <laughs> making their progress. So, um, but yeah, that's what you look like, Johnny. Um, so always wondered. <laughs> Even though you get to kind of see yourself already, but um, somebody else, their progress, um, working on, working through their sweater. Um, it's I can't really tell exactly where they're at, but I mean it looks like it's coming along really well. Um, and I really like this kind of like textured yarn that they have in there. Um, but yeah, looking a like tweed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like how like. I usually don't like the like speckled kind of look when you when you like create the fabric with with the yarn, but actually I think this one works really well. Um, so uh, another post from uh, Claudna. So hers is coming along perfect. I mean, look look at that. Um, I, I I love like just the green in this. Um, I like the uh, the whole transition to um, cables. Um, Looking good, looking great, um, and I mean, we talk about a custom fit sweater. Like, look at that! Like, that is custom fit. So, yeah, that's uh, great. So, here's some uh, more progress on another person's sweater, um, and um, I believe this one is using um, UU yarns. Yeah, so, that's Jen, who's. Uh She's designing a sweater for you, you, for the 30 Day Sweater Challenge. Yeah, it looks really cool. I like the the sleeves and the collar on there. Like that's great. Like I should do one for myself. But uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be really awesome. Actually, I think I think I will do that. And here we go. Here is Josh's progress on his sweater. And if you guys <laughs> were watching our show last night, he cast on twice during the show. <laughs> and look at where he's at now. Like, I'm a bit jealous. I've been working on it too, and I'm I'm still not quite to this point. But looking good. Great job. Good job, Josh. <laughs> so, and there's his uh his Instagram right there. Um, if you guys want to follow him on Instagram and continue following along with his progress. But that's all we have for now. <laughs> Be sure to check us out. Um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Ravelry. And whatever you are working on, your progress, document it, take a photo, and hashtag 30 Day Sweater. We would love to see what you guys are doing. Keep it up um, and keep progressing. So we'll see you next time. So, Robert, what, um, what day are you on in the, in the framework? In the framework? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm thinking. I'm like, this would be like what day three. Uh, I'm so. gonna go ahead and guess day two. Day two, yeah, that would be probably. M there's there's no way I'm beyond those. That's for sure. <laughs> the catch up days. Don't worry. Yeah. No, the catch up days. We're gonna be at Yarnosphere. So. <laughs> you have plenty of time to knit at Yarnosphere. That's true. I'm I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm gonna sit in the booth and just watch you guys work while I knit. So. <laughs> So we we'll, we'll just we can just put up a sign right next to me saying 30 day sweater in action. So, <laughs> in progress. So this is what it looked like. You could be doing what I am doing. Like it'll be great, great sell, selling point, right? So, but. All right. Well, thanks so much. And again, if you want to join us on Ravelry, go to 30daysweater.com/ravelry. There's a free group that you can join there. Um, we don't really jump in there as much, but we do post um, a, a thread each day where you can share your progress. 
Um, and there's a lot of very knowledgeable knitters in there who have been helping others out. Um, we try and jump in there when we have a chance to see if there's any questions we can work with. But um, yeah, it's a it's a great little community, and there's tons of people fo posting all of their photos in there. I think we're at close to 250 people Something now. Like that, yeah. So let's uh, keep inviting your friends and let's build that up. We want we want the, there to be thousands of people in the 30 Day Sweater Challenge uh, in the coming years um, and through the rest of the year as well. So uh, 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry. Yes, I want to hear something cool. So you know how at the beginning of the sweater I was like, so the body's going to take me a really long time, mm -hmm. but the days I have to do the sleeves are going to be like super quick. You just finished the sleeve? I just did a sleeve. <laughs> what? So this is my sleeve. I really just had to put the edging on it, but here it is. Yeah. It looks cute. I, I like it. I'm very excited. No, I think this is going to be a great little sweater um, Sweater dress. Somebody asked me yesterday, um, can, would you make me a sweater dress? Oh, yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> but I'll give you a pattern when I'm done with it. <laughs> And then you can knit your own. I was like, I'll teach you how to knit, and then you can do it. So we have a few questions here before we wrap up today. So let's check out the chat room. Um, and if you have questions you'd like us to answer during the Sweater Knitting Show, you can send those to questions at 30daysweater.com. And uh, uh, put in the subject line, question for show, or question for the sweater show. And uh, we'll read some of those up on the air uh, when we when we get them. So let's see. Someone asks for the sweater design contest. Can we use the continuous sleeve for top downs, or do we have to use the raglan style only? Now, for those of you who don't know what this person is talking about, at the end of the 30-day sweater challenge, we will begin taking submissions of your sweaters that you've designed using the 30-day sweater framework. So. If you did not design the sweater using our framework, it's not eligible, but you can submit a photo of the sweater that you have designed using the 30-day sweater framework, either through the book or the course, and you will be eligible to have your sweater picked by the audience uh, to be included in a new collection that we'll be putting together next year using the 30-day sweater uh, framework. So and there will be 12 winners. So yes. it's not just like you have one shot. You have 12 options. Like you could totally win. Yeah, and beyond that, each winner will get a sweater's worth of yarn and an interchangeable needle set from knitters. What just happened? I'm not really sure what just happened. I don't know, but it shows that we're back. So here oh. we are. Um, so they'll get a, a sweater's worth of yarn and an interchangeable needle set from Knitter's Pride, um, which puts out some really beautiful collections of knitting needles. In fact, they have a brand new needle set that I just heard about. And do the people get it? No, but because um, it's a limited edition. Oh. It is their brand new carbons, their oh. carbon fiber needles. It's an interchangeable needle set, and it comes in a custom like black box with this like laser etched tree on it that you can see through. I've already I've already ordered two of them. You did? Yeah. Oh. That's my Christmas gift to myself. I was just gonna say, I was like, so that's what you're getting for Christmas. Well, that's what I'm getting myself probably for my birthday slash Christmas. And then we'll probably give away another set. Well near the end how of the about year. I get to keep it till Christmas and give it to you. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. They don't even ship till November. So. Okay. So Anyways, Knitter's Pride has some beautiful needle sets, and uh, the number one winner of the whole contest, the person with the most votes, will have their sweater uh, exhibited in the fashion show at Stitches West in Santa Clara, California at the end of February. Um, they will receive a works package to the any Stitches event any one Stitches event during 2014. So you can go attend all of the events. It's like a $700 value. Yeah. You can go to the classes, all the cool dinners, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. It's, just... it's like all access pass. It's it's amazing. Um, and the good folks at XRX have donated that to, um, to the winner. That's, um, that's a pretty sweet deal. 
uh, I we got Signature Needle Arts, which is kind of like the catalog of knitting needles, donated five sets of their convertible needles, because they don't do interchangeable needle sets, they just do convertible needles, so you can switch the length between the needles. Um, five sets. Those things are like $35, $40 a piece. And the winner gets that? Five sets of their choice in size. Yeah, so basically, it's not like a set of interchangeable needles in all the different sizes. You get one needle and get all the different lengths, right? Uh, yeah, they'll get probably like three lengths or something like that. And you get to pick five needle sizes, so pick your favorites. Yeah, um, that's, yeah I think that's really awesome. cool. Awesome, so if you were not going to enter the design competition, you really should, because uh, it's amazing. The winner also gets $200, I believe, to Buffalo Wool Company for and yarn, and a sweater's worth of yarn from Malabrigo. From Malabrigo. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. But even beyond that, we are, ourselves... Donating a thousand dollars to the winner for the for the uh, the challenge. That's so. Okay. If you're using the framework, which means you have to have the book or the course to design your sweater, you can submit your sweater design and be entered in. Someone's saying that they lost the video altogether. We did for a second. Let's see if it's still working. La la la. Even beyond that. Yeah. Yep. It's working. <laughs> okay. I was worried, but it's good. So, uh, the full details on how to enter your design into the competition will be revealed on November 1st at the end of the competition. Okay. At the end of the 30 Day Sweater Challenge. At the end of the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, but you will have two weeks that you can submit. submit your sweater. So you actually have an, you still have more than 30 days from right now that you could participate. So if you haven't gotten the book or you haven't signed up for the course, then there's still plenty of time to, you know. And another thing when it involved. comes to the challenge, like you don't have to submit a pattern. You just submit a picture of your sweater and then we'll work with you to like take pictures and get your pattern laid out and stuff if you win. So don't worry about like getting everything all figured out as far as that goes before you submit. So you should just take a picture, submit it, and hopefully you win because it's awesome. Absolutely. Um, and I would say even people who have the course have a little bit of an advantage because if they're trying to do something a little bit more complicated or interesting, we're there to help them. Right, in the you know, chat rooms and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's uh, answer a couple other questions here. Someone said that the giveaway link doesn't work anymore. That's because the giveaway ended yesterday for the weekly giveaway. We'll have a new weekly giveaway that starts tomorrow, and we'll announce that during the 30-day sweater or during the sweater knitting show tomorrow morning. Yes. Um, so we have all sorts of new goodies for this coming week. So Yes. Um, the people who won uh, for last week's uh, – let's see. I can pull them up real quick. The winners were Madeline Selvig and Taya Schramm, and we'll be emailing you today to get your contact info so that we can send out those um, big prizes they won, like $150 worth of yarn from, yeah. Mal uh, from Imperial Yarn and a $100 gift card to Buffalo Wool Company. And you know what I noticed on both of their entries? What's that? They each had 11 entries because they must have gotten a friend to sign up. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. just goes to show, the more that you share the giveaway and you get people to sign up, the more chances you have to win. You yes. know? And that goes to show that they definitely did that, and I'm sure it helped them become the winner. Yes. Uh, let's see. Lacey, what is the name? Oh my gosh, I love it. She always asks me in pink. <laughs> this is great. If you really want to get my attention, you should write in pink. It's fantastic. Um, what is the name of the finished edge of your hoodie? It's just a hemmed edge. I'm not really sure that it has a name. Do we have a video for it? What's that? This edge here. Do we have a video on how to do it? No, we don't have one. We should make one. Okay. We're going to make a video for it soon. Let's see. But it's basically using... 
a whip stitch. So you just, when you cut the end, like after you've bound off all of your stitches, when you cut the end of the yarn, leave a really, really, really long end and th put a darning needle on it and then fold it up to the length you want your hem to be and then um, use a whip stitch on the back side and if you go through the center of the stitch it makes it kind of just look like it's the, like a nice little stitch going along the edge like I don't know can you show the thing so I can see what I'm showing you so this part here it kind of just looks like a nice stitch the whip stitch is actually going through the center of each of these stitches and you just grab one of the legs behind here of the stitch and just go through it out all the way um, one stitch you can kinda tell if it's straight because basically you're putting one loop through each stitch and it should match up with the the background stitch so it's not too hard but it looks amazing it's kinda one of my favorite things right now so I'm using it a lot but um, we'll probably make a video for that very soon also Let's see, Smoothie Queen says, for the 30-day sweater online course, can I start any day of the month, or is it set up on a schedule where we start on a specific date? No, it's not set up on a specific schedule. It's all broken down by days, so it's day one, day two, day three, and we actually have different parts within certain days because there's different steps that you have to do, you know, on like a particular day, you may have this thing you need to do and this thing you need to do. But for this month, we're sending out an email. Just for this month, we've been sending out an, a daily email to remind people, hey, go you know check out this day in the course so that you don't forget. Um, that That's not necessarily the way we'll do it all the time. But you can uh, definitely go through at your own pace. You don't have to do what the email says. So Yeah, so day one could begin on October 15th if you wanted, and then you just do 30 days. But even that, the days are all just steps. So you could do more than one day if you, want. if you wanted to. You know, it's just a matter of the pace and the time that you have to put into it. So. And it's really cool on the course. Like he said, you can track um, how far you are in the course is really cool. There's actually like a little green button that says like, I've completed this section. And then when you see the course outline, it shows like all the little green spots like that you've completed. So I really like to have the green spots. You know so what we're going to add? keep like finishing them. We're actually going to add a feature where when you finish a section where you get like a little badge that will show up in the forum and it's like, hey, I completed my, my sweater body. <laughs> You got the sweater body badge. Nice. Right? And you can, you'll have like a one sleeve badge. Nice. And then the two sleeve badge. And then like the completed so what, sweater badge. What happens for the consecutive sweaters after that? Like for the first sweater, that's really cool. But what if you're like on your, you know, fifth sweater? That only will work on the first sweater for now. So you, you'll just always have the two sleeve badge. You could like start, yeah, I guess you could start over, but then you'd lose your badges. That's true. Yeah, well. It's still cool for the first time, and then you just always have a two-sleeve badge. Can we make it change colors after, like, you've completed more? I don't want to make promises. It's already hard enough just to get the badge again. <laughs> so why do you have to make things even more complicated? Well, Let's just be satisfied with the fact that we can reward people with badges for their hard work in knitting a sweater. I was just going to say, because I'm, I'm almost done with this sweater, and I would kind of like another badge. Well, we don't have the badges yet, so you can't oh. get a badge to begin with okay. at all Fine. right now. Okay. There, Fine. there should be a way to reset eventually the course, and you can start over again. Uh, let's see. You mentioned that you did the show before. Will you be doing another thirty-day sweater in the near future? Well, the so the sweater show that we're doing right now. This is. You know, this is not about the 30-day sweater, although we do answer a lot of questions about the 30-day sweater. This is more about sweater knitting in general. And this show is going to keep going. It probably won't be every day after October. Right. But um, we'll keep we'll keep it up because I really like this show. We have lots of friends in the industry who design sweaters. Um, we have um, a lot of friends who make really cool yarns, and um, we want to talk about how their products can be. Uh, utilize best in sweater knitting. There's a lot of other techniques that go into sweaters that we can discuss. And so we're really planning on making 30daysweater.com 
a hub for sweater knitting education beyond just the 30-day sweater framework. Mm -hmm. And eventually we'll also include other styles of sweater construction in the 30-day sweater. Yeah. So, um, so there'll be, you'll have a, a separate course that you could get for a saddle shoulder style sweater or a circular yoke style sweater or a set in sleeve style sweater. Those will all be different courses that you can take but I think using we're going to plan program. on doing the 30-day sweater as a big group every October. Every October we will do the 30-day sweater challenge. And then we have we already have other companies that are asking us to do knit-alongs knit -alongs with their audiences throughout the year. So, so who knows where it will go. A few times go. a year we'll do it. I'm hoping to do another knit-along um, even if it's just with the sweater knitting show, mm -hmm. um, probably in like January, because January is a really great time to knit sweaters. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but as far as thirty day sweater, you can do a thirty day sweater whenever you want. You like can do one every month. Yeah, it's not. It's not that you can only do it during the thirty day sweater challenge in October. You know, you can challenge yourself to knit a sweater in thirty days. You know, starting tomorrow. Uh, Melian says, "What's a badge? Um, a badge, you know, like a merit badge, like on, like in, in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Like, we'll have a little digital badge that will show up in your account on the course. So it's like getting grounding points, basically. Kind of, yeah, except minus the points. Well, yeah, you just get a cool badge. Or if you're on Foursquare, you get badges on there. Right." Yeah. yeah, so you do different things and then you earn a badge for doing the thing. So it's called gamification. All right, well, guys, we, we're going to wrap up today. It's been wonderful hanging out with you again for another episode of the Sweater Knitting Show. Uh, tomorrow we have another special guest. Uh, we have Mira Cole from Ba Yarns will be joining us. We'll be announcing a brand new giveaway for the week. Um, we will be updating you on our sweater progress once more and, and tomorrow I will have I can will have something I can actually put on so nice. I'm really excited about that I'm gonna spend a little bit more time knitting on my sweater today um, it's like a little bit easy before we have to go into I yarn sphere. Be done with my sweater tomorrow. I'm pretty sure you will be done with your sweater tomorrow yeah. I'll probably be done tonight but I'll have it like blocked and stuff and then I won't have the cowl color done yet but I mean I'll still be able to wear it because you don't right. have to wear it with that right uh, go ahead and check us out at 30daysweater.com slash show if you want to watch previous episodes. If you want to join us live, we are uh, live every Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, so if you're on the East Coast, okay, sometimes I get this, people are like, I was here, you know, like, and you guys were two hours late or something like that, and they thought that they were – three hours behind us rather than three hours ahead of us. Gotcha. So ahead, for those people who don't know, means that it's actually 1.30 p.m. Eastern when we start the show. At 10.30 a.m. At 10.30 a.m. So, um, so you can join us live in the chat room. You know, we take questions from the chat room. If you have questions and you can't join us live, you can email them to questions at 30daysweater.com. Just put in the subject line, question for show, and we will uh, we'll sort through those and pick our favorites. Um, you can join our Ravelry group at 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube if you're watching there to the Sweater Knitting Show, and uh, we should be on iTunes in the next couple of weeks. Um, so there'll be like a whole bunch of episodes at once <laughs> <laughs> that we'll be putting there. Uh, thank you guys again so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow.